Greetings and welcome to the tutorial, Gravehammer here. For today's subject we are going for a kind of a fundamentals or basics type of tutorial. For the Grim and Dark style I employ a variety of different techniques, products and paints, which might be a bit intimidating if you haven't worked with similar ones. Most commonly miniature painters use common acrylics and those are our main tools for painting as they are easy to use, tinned with water and offer a huge variety in both quality and pigment. But what are enamels, oils and effects paint in miniature painting? Well, most of these products are known in the scale modeling community, uh, community as these are first and foremost designed to imitate realistic effects we encounter in the world. Rust, crime, dust, shipping, you name it. Only your imagination is the limit. So to break it down in a very, very simple way, we have the enamel washes and effects here. For example, streaking crime from Ammo by MIG, also referred to just MIG or Ammo, and dark brown wash from AK Interactive. Both function very similar to each other, and they are both extremely runny and basically in one wash consistency. These products are commonly formed out of two components, which is the base medium that can be thinned down with white spirits, and then the pigment. They have the distinct petroleum kind of odor to them, so a good ventilated room is advised when using the products. How these effects work is that you apply the products either as a wash or just a small streaks, and the medium binding the pigment evaporates, it leaves the effect on the surface. Now what makes these effects great to use is the ability to reactivate the products once it has been allowed to dry, and the additional ability to work the products after applying. Most common way we work these effects in my tutorials is using a Q-tip or a dedicated hobby brush and the addition of white spirits we can reactivate and work the effect to our liking. This allows us to play uh, around with the effects and achieve different kinds of re uh, results depending. I will explain a bit more about white spirits, turpentine and those kind of thinners a bit later. Now the second most used product in my arsenal is probably the oils. Oil painting is the golden standard to different kind of artists around the world, but to us miniature painters they might feel a bit intimidating. There are a lot of great artists in the trade who use oils in their works and a little search will net you a ton of great tutorials, so I won't go too deep down that rabbit hole in this video, as we want to just have a basic understanding of the products. Oils are, as the name suggests, a paint that uses oil as a medium for pigments. Oils are highly resistant and commonly have a much longer drying time, which works both to our benefit and sometimes as an adversary. As with animal effects, the most common technique I use with oils is washes and pin washes, but they are not limited to just that. You can use them to dry brush and use just a regular brush to work the paint, giving nice and very easy application to projects. Oil paints are commonly sold in large quantities and it's varied what oil medium is used, but for example Abteilung 502 and Windsor and Newton offer smaller bottles for miniature painting, and especially the 502 is designed for miniature painting in mind. Keep in mind that oil paints may take several days to dry so that they can be handled. Now let's talk about the so-called white spirits and turpentine. Before I continue on this part, I have to be responsible and warn you that these products are extremely toxic. When handled with care, they are safe to use and they are used around the world by millions of artists, but especially inhaled or swallowed, they can be really bad. So if you have kids or pets, be extra sure to not let them near the products. Most if not all of these products have bottle caps that are protected, but it's our responsibility to keep the others safe. I recommend using a mask to protect yourself and a well ventilated room along with proper gloves. In many of my tutorials I refer to white spirits or turpentine and in some cases they are both completely different and at the same time the same. White spirits also known as mineral spirits are a thinning product uh, based on petroleum. It has that very distinct smell to it. Uh, there are products on the market that have removed the more toxic compound of the product and sell themselves as odorless thinner, but at the same time turpentine is also so sold uh, with the same name. Generally speaking, white spirits are great for all of the thinning of animal and oil products and work very well for the purpose. 
because oil painting is so popular, most art stores sell odorlastina, also known as turpentine. These products vary highly in their quality, but uh, a respected store sells good quality products. Turpentine, as it stands, is still, uh, distilled from the resin of certain trees and is used widely for different purposes such as varnishes and, well, thinner. Even, uh, even if this product is plant-based, it is still extremely toxic, especially inhaled and or swallowed. Do not let the odorless tag fool you. It just means you can smell it, but it will go into your lungs if evaporated. Both enamels and oils are extremely resistant to water, so when using these products you need to have some appropriate thinner around, if nothing else, than to clean your process after use. So now that we have a very basic understanding on what we have in the products, let's go over some of the applications. I will always tell my viewers when I'm using a animal or oil product and remind them in that step that appropriate thinner is needed, but it's good to know how and why the products work. Here I have a primed product that I have for reference, uh, primed uh, with black and airbrushed some off-white to it. As the products we use contain extremely potent thinners, I also sprayed a layer of matte varnish to protect the underlying acrylics. In most cases using varnish is not required, as when, uh, when dry the acrylic paint is pretty hardy and can withstand the thinners. But if you are unsure or want to protect your paint job, then I recommend using a varnish before going to use the products. We apply some enamel effect straight from the bottle over the desired surface like a wash, keeping it quite light on the first pass, but you can always vary the process to your liking. More enamel, the more grimy it will look. Because enamels take time to dry, and we can easily work them at this point. The surface is wet with the product, but we can use a higher dryer, for example to speed up the curing time. What this does is applying heat and air airflow so the enamel medium or spirits evaporate, leaving the pigment on the surface. Be careful with the airflow though, as if the surface is really wet with the product, it will push the effect around. Once the surface is neat and mostly dry, we can go over, come over it with a q-tip or a brush that has been dipped in white spirits. I have a cup here with some of the thinner and I dip the q-tip there to let it soak slightly and dab over the surface. You can see instantly that the q-tip starts to pick up the pigment and reactivate the surface, allowing us uh, to work more on the effect. We don't want to use too much pressure here, just small dabbing motion. If you use a lot of force and rub it, the underlying acrylic my, uh, paint might come off and the paint job is ruined. Mechanical friction is not required to work, so just use gentle motion to clean it up to the point you want to. Brush will work just as fine, but requires a bit more handling as the bristles commonly either pick up thinner or pigment, not both as well as Q-tip. Also brushes create more friction on the surface, making it more risky to use, so this is something I recommend to advanced users. Oils function in a similar fashion, just instead of enamel pigments we have pigment in oil. I made a second blade very much uh, the same as the previous and I am applying a wash I mixed up in a cup roughly around 1 to 4 ratio with one part oil, four parts of uh, white spirit. As you can see it's uh, quite nice and flows really well, making a great tool for pin washes and as, a, uh, as it's cheap to produce mass amount it's great for your terrain projects for example. I use a lot of oil washes for my tutorials too, as they leave a very dark and great surface. With oil washes you have to be a bit more careful uh, with the application and drying, as it's usually quite runny and a high volume airflow pushes the wash around easily. Also, reductive technique on oils is a bit more complicated than with animals, as oil is very resistant and usually sticks to the surface a little better once you let it dry, however, you can work it in the same manner as animals. For now, we focus on using the product as a wash, but I will demonstrate in the future what you can do with various techniques. 
Oils are very heavy in pigment, so they are great to, to your arsenal and work very well, uh, especially as washes and you can mix different oils to create different end results. Here you saw me uh, dapping some bigger droplets of white spirit so the pigment dissolves and runs down the plate, creating streaking effects. As you can see, I used a dump brush uh, to work a more dry portion of the plate and it had the tendency to smudge. Do not worry, a simple solution is to have a slight amount of white spirits in the brush and continue working. Oils can be worked in many different ways, uh, very similar to animals, the key being in how much white spirits you apply. I love using oils as the end result is usually very nice looking. Using a Q-dip with slight amount of spirits is a great way to work more precise portions in your model as the Q-dip picks the excess rather than moves it around. Good for highlighting, for example. Also, you can easily work the streaks with a smaller brush to have more a definition. Here is a picture of both of the plates and how the products worked. This is only a tiny portion of the techniques we can use and apply, and my goal here was to just to explain the very basics of these products. After the surface has dried up, you are free to use any acrylic paints over them with no problems. Keep in mind though, that as acrylics are a water-based water product, they do not mix up well with white spirits if the surface is still wet. There is a fine line here, but generally speaking, for the fundamentals, let the effects dry up before continuing with acrylic colors. Hopefully this tutorial answered some questions you might have on the basic application of animals and oils. I understand that this is just a very tiny scratch on the surface when diving into these products, but that's the fun of it also. Some of these techniques are certainly well known to my viewers already, but it's good to go over some basics once in a while. If you enjoyed the tutorial, please consider subscribing and hit that like button. If you want to delve deeper into the secrets of cream dark painting, you can always hop on to my Patreon and become a patron. We have cookies on the dark side, links in the description. I would like to extend my sincerest gratitude to my patrons. You make this possible and your continued support is greatly appreciated. Till next time, wish you all the best and have fun hobbying. Oh, and stay grim dark.